No doubt women coming forward about sexual harassment, abuse and assault has brought to the surface a misuse of power. But now that the Me Too campaign is nothing new, has the movement gone too far? And is there a way women and men could carve a new path forward that makes room for compassion, respect, empathy and understanding? Join us live is our weekly sex blogger, Natalie Lahav and Amanda Ronson, who is an energy master and conscious development expert. Hello, ladies. Hello. Welcome back to the show, Amanda. Hi. So this is a, you know, we've been talking a lot about, yes. you know, these issues, but yes. we haven't really addressed the kind of the, the, the repercussions and what, you know, right. what Me Too has done in the not so productive way. Right. And I was just telling a friend that my, or anyone, a man that I know, I'm not going to name names, but he's told me that he used to like stop hitchhikers um, and take them, to, you know, to Tel Aviv and back. And he doesn't stop for women anymore. And I was like, why don't, you know, why don't you do that? And he's like, I'm scared that they'll say that I did something. And, and I did tell him, like, if you don't do anything, you're fine. He's like, no, but, you know, a lot of women are taking advantage of the situation. Right. And it's getting a little bit out of control. And, you know, people aren't sure what harassment is anymore. And they don't know how to act in the workplace or around women. And I feel like there's a lot of confusion. Right. And for, in your case, you know, you work with a lot of people, families, couples, adults, workplaces. You know, what, what have you seen now kind of as the you know, the short term. Well, the old behaviors behavior, no longer yeah. work. So a man thinks that he gets noticed and he behaves a certain way. A woman feels a, the way that they need to behave. And now all of a sudden we've got a whole new code of conduct mm -hmm. and ethics. And we need to start teaching people how to use them mm -hmm. and how to behave in the workplace or even in relationships because the whole dating game's changed. Everything changes. Just, so now with it just this seems like there's so much fear. Like, yeah, are we, we finding that like, men are afraid to hire women just because they don't? Even nice family men and to promote are not them. these. They're not well, promoting women, they're promoting the men because they don't want people to think that they promoted the woman. You know, we've heard so that's that negative you can't for the women. even have a meeting mm -hmm. with a woman if you're a guy with a woman, um, with the door closed. You know what I mean? They have mm -hmm. to keep the door open. And this, is, uh, this has led to many, many issues going down now in the workplace. So now women aren't necessarily being, um, you know, promoted. promoted. For the, right, for, you know, in the past, in the 60s, it was like promoted for their, their brains and their intellect and all this, but now it's out of fear of, you know, getting favorable treatment and it being, you know, bordering on and this, inappropriate. this concerns me, but on the other side, maybe now you see men can start taking some responsibility for their actions mm -hmm. and start learning how to um, go through their emotions, start speaking about right. things correctly, being honest, authentic, women as well. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we can start learning how to be the new improved man. Right. Okay. So Which interesting. Is Speaking of new improved, we actually Michael Douglas recently spoke about uh, this issue. You know, because there's been a lot of his contemporaries, Morgan Freeman, Dustin Hoffman. You know, that are also kind of taking the heat. You know, are they all the same as the Harvey Weinstein? So here's what Michael Douglas had to say. Mm. Well, I mean, there's a uh, as far as the Me Too movement, there's a a, a tremendous outpouring. Of, of feelings and a lot of people being held responsible for it. Um, I'm concerned in in some cases and in situations with some people that I've seen um, that there was a rush to judgment that has affected and hurt some people's careers um, when it certainly may be, be an issue of somebody saying something in bad taste but it was certainly not a question of being harassed or physically assaulted. And I, I, think, I think we've all kind of realized that on both sides, and people have, have uh, been a little more careful before they completely, you know, ruin somebody's career. Uh, so what do you guys have to say? <laughs> well, I was just thinking, you know, women need to learn how to express themselves and communicate that something's uncomfortable for them. Mm -hmm. So if someone says something to your work and, you know, instead of running to your boss and suing him and actually ruining his life, like Michael Douglas said, maybe we need to learn how to communicate better between men and women and just say, you know what, that wasn't comfortable for me. Maybe next time don't say it in that way. And then everyone just keeps on working like right. usual. Like, don't stop making every little harassment a huge, big, right. you know, story. So how can men and women, I mean, like, and he's someone who went to rehab for right. sex. He so he was a sex addict. He yep. took responsibility. We don't know if he was forced to it or how that mm -hmm. came about, but it doesn't matter. He took responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then, you see, now he understands what can happen with, with that. Mm -hmm. So he's more sensitive to understand that there's two sides on everything. And something that one man could think is just very natural is not okay to a woman if it's right on her issues. So how can women help? You know, because if men are so afraid of us now, how can women kind of help pave it fundamentally? We don't have women this have forever. children and fundamentally mothers have sons so we need to learn to educate the boys 
We need to show them a new way, a new pathway. And that's part of our responsibility as well. And that's okay. The next generation are learning how to speak and how to behave. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that really worries me is we've got a loss of chivalry. We're losing all of this gallantry. And I love I know, we love a good romantic man. So, man, I'm you so know what? If someone worried. likes you at work and sends you flowers and he genuinely likes yes. you. Yes. What's happening to all of that? And that does, that does make me fearful. So chivalry is dead? No, I don't want it to be. Don't it needs to go be. through a makeover. That's yeah, what makeover. Right. Right. makeover. So given that you also work with, you know, with couples, men and women, what can we do together? Like, what's the first step we could do together to kind of Fundamentally, learn how to speak from your emotions. Yeah. Speak. Say to them, this makes me feel. Mm -hmm. And then go from there. Don't use blame. Start so speaking Stop blaming people. In, from the place of intimacy. And the second thing is learning about sex. Learning that mm. sex is positive, it's beautiful, it's great. So when you come from this place and, you know, you really appreciate sexuality for its beauty, we no longer have to behave in sordid ways. Okay? And then we can get what we need and it's going to appear for us. And right. that's the key thing at the Any moment. Any final thoughts? <laughs> Educate on sex. I mean, that's my job, basically. I write <laughs> about these topics just to get the information out there and so that it's not such a big taboo. They don't talk about it. It just needs to be a natural part of our day-to-day -day life for men and for women. And then there won't be this, like, you know, power struggle between us and everyone will just, you know, live together. Kumbaya. Yeah, amen yeah. to that. Yeah.